Yo, what's poppin'? It's the Hyphen, and here I am at the world-famous Barracks, partnering up with Caffeine, which is a live streaming service. So we're gonna be building a whole new studio here. I'm actually going to have it set up where it's multicam, live stream, where we can engage with chat, cut to different segments, some pre-recorded content as well. And instead of doing it upstairs in an office space, they want the studio to be built here, back here, facing the whole park. The Barracks is one of the biggest skateboard companies in the entire world. And here in their headquarters, they have the state-of-the-art, top-notch private skate park where all the pro skaters come and skate. They are one of the biggest content creators in skateboarding. And I've actually been partnered with the Barracks for quite some time now. I run Barracks Gaming. I do a lot of different productions with the Barracks from Halloween Kills the Barracks to Santa Claus and the Grinch Skate the Barracks. Stuff that I've directed, written, uh, shot, edited, etc. Now, aside from actually building the studio, my team is actually gonna operate the OBS, the video switching, audio switching, all that good stuff, as well as also, I will be directing the live stream show. I've been a part of a lot of the meetings internally, working with Steve Barra and a lot of the other key role players here at the Barracks in order to really formulate the show and break down what is required to make the show happen. So I actually provided them with a huge list of equipment. So everything from cameras to switchers to laptop to pretty much everything you could think of. Now, for those of you who don't know, yes, I do build studios from audio to gaming to music. Me and Amari actually built my gaming podcast studio upstairs here at the barracks together as well. So we're here back at it. Another studio build. Are you ready? So ready. Now time for the funnest part. We just rip everything open. All right, so we have the entire production set up, fully done, and it's actually been in operation already for several weeks. We've actually done eight weeks already, so it's been a couple months since we actually started building the setup. Let me show you the setup now. I'm gonna break it down, exactly what we have and kind of how we're using it. So I'm not gonna go over all the technical specs. I'm not gonna go into all the OBS settings, but I will show you pretty much everything that we have here. We have three different shows that we do with the Barracks and Caffeine. We have a skate show, which is like a talk show with a guest and a host that's sitting on couches. And then we have a hype show, which is two skaters looking at skate videos on a laptop. And then we have fight nights. Our fight nights are actually games of skate competition where we actually have an audience here. And those are all on floating cam. So show one and two are stationary in this area over here. We normally have couches here. Show three, which is the fight night, is actually all in the park moving around. So. Let me take you first to the setup in the back that actually controls everything. So here I direct the show. I'm able to see all the cams and I have my team, which is Amari and Scott. Amari is actually right behind the cam. Shout out to Amari. So Amari's station is here. He's actually running the OBS system off a laptop and then doing all the stream deck switching, which I'll show you guys more in a bit. Then on this side, I have Scott monitoring audio incoming through the Rodecaster Pro, and I'll touch again more in a bit on all that. And he's also operating this Stream Deck Atom video switcher. So he's actually able to switch between the different cams. So we have four cams on at once. So here I'm gonna click a button. So camera one, that camera there, right now it's just pointing at the wall, but normally it's at the host of the show. Cam two here will actually go to a camera that is wide and shows the host and the guest sitting on couches. Cam three goes to a camera here that's pointed at the guest that's sitting down. Cam four is set to a floating cam. Now, right now, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but the white balance is terribly off. That's because cam one, two, and three are set up for the lights that we have here. And then cam four, whenever we go and actually use the floating cam to do some live action skateboarding in the park, we turn on the house lights and that color temperature right now that looks very different from the other three, is for the house lights. Let me show you guys this side over here. So our lighting, our main source here is a Nanlite Forza 300B light set to 5600 Kelvin. And we're actually using the big aperture lantern, which is one of my favorite soft boxes for soft diffused light. It wraps around very nicely. So that is pointing directly straight at our host and co-host. And then we do have two other lights on each end just to give a little bit extra lighting. So we have two Forza 60V lights also set to 5600 Kelvin, and they have these small Forza 60V softboxes. Now, sometimes when people are wearing hats, we'll lower those down so we can give some light 
underneath the lid of the hat. This is the floating cam that we use, the Panasonic HCX1. Now this is a camcorder style camera, which and no, honestly, I'm not really a big fan of, but these are great for running gun. We also do have here the Teradek Bolt 4K LT750. This is a video wireless transmission system and it works great. It goes really far. Here, it works flawlessly. We actually have three of these, one for each of the cams. When we do our fight night shows, which are again, all in the park, games of skate, we have three of these cams, each with their own Teradek. I'll break that down more in a bit. When we're doing the shows where people are sitting here, we have three stationary cams and then one floating cam. Now the Teradek does require DTAP power source. It doesn't have batteries. We actually use here a V-mount battery and then we put a little plate here to kind of hold it in place. So we have this V-mount battery to power this up. It'll last all day. Now, when it comes to the stationary cams, we have three Sony A6600 cameras. We have one on each end that's dedicated to the host and co-host. Those are using the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4 lens, roughly about an 85 millimeter equivalent for full frames. It's very tight, has a nice cinematic pop to it. And then we do have these newer tripods. Now the one in the middle for our wide shot, we're using the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens, which is equivalent to a 24 millimeter in full frame. So this monitor is showing you the final output that's going out to stream. So that way the host, co-host, et cetera, they can all see. And then here is a monitor that's being used with a laptop. And someone, when we're doing the show, is actually on a laptop, splitting the screen in half to our chat, our live chat from Caffeine. And then the other half is a Word document that they're scrolling through that's kind of our guide or teleprompter, you can say. Now, those of you who know me know that I hate messes. I like everything nice, clean, sleek. Unfortunately, we don't really have that option here because on occasion we do have to move around. So as much as I love to hide and tuck and cover all these wires, I can't. So please don't look over here. Just kidding, come on. So now back to the production station. I'm gonna go left to right, show you everything that's here and pretty much what we're using it for. To the left here. So here we have a handheld microphone system made by Sure. This is the receiver and then the microphone has the transmitter built into it. So it's a wireless system that can go anywhere in the park without any interference. It works really well, super professional. When we have a show where we have a host or someone commentating around the park, this is the main source for that type of audio. Now, when it comes to a host and a co-host sitting down, we are using the Sony lavalier wireless system. So we have one and two. Now these work pretty well. These will not go anywhere in the park. These are more for smaller to mid range, but they sound really great. So here we have the Rode, Rodecaster Pro, one of my favorite mixers, which also works as a USB audio interface. So it does have four XLR inputs, as well as a USB input, 3.5 millimeter input, et cetera. Really here on this show, we're only using two lavalier systems, which are connected via XLR. And then this wireless mic system here is also XLR. So we're really only using three channels at a time. Now that comes in here. I really love that it has compressors, gates, all types of other very fundamental and essential audio processing that can be done within the system itself prior to it going out to the computer. So I'm able to actually have a very clean sound that control the dynamics a lot using those compressors. And then we do have headphones out so that way people can listen to. So Scott here is monitoring audio through here and then if I need another source for myself when I'm here directing, I have a set of headphones that comes out of here as well. So you can actually have four different headphone outputs. There is a USB port that goes out and it goes into the laptop. We do have our Atom Mini Pro ISO video switcher made by Blackmagic. It does have four inputs like I mentioned earlier. We have an HDMI output and it shows you here all four cams, shows you some audio levels, etc. Now, because we're shooting using the lavalier mics and the wireless handheld mic, all the audio coming from the cameras is muted the entire time. So, so here on the screen, you can see audio levels moving from the cameras, but again, they are muted and that's why they're dimmed out. So four HDMI ins, four different sources, and then we're able to use the Atom Pro as a webcam, pretty much. It has a USB output that connects directly into the laptop. And so when we go into OBS, we use the Atom Pro as one video source. So we're able to have a scene with the Atom Pro as our webcam. And then really here on OBS, as you can see, that's open. 
that one source is literally all four cams, but we choose what video source is being seen from the Blackmagic video switcher. And now moving on from there, we have the laptop. Now we do have an HDMI output to mirror what is seen here on the screen of the laptop to this monitor. So when I'm back here directing, I don't have to be over Amari's shoulder. I can see what he's seeing here. Although sometimes I kind of end up being over his shoulder and then I realize later like, damn, I need to back up. But so my bad Amari, if I'm ever in your zone too much, I forget that there's this monitor here. Now we do have a USB hub that we added because we needed more USB ports, but also that hub has another HDMI output, which allows us to send that feed, like I mentioned earlier, to the monitor back here for the people on the other side to see the final output of OBS. So here we have the Stream Deck XL, which is connected to the laptop. This allows you to program buttons and control OBS and pretty much everything that you want it to switch to. So we can go from scene to scene, from overlays to pre-recorded content to live, all kinds of stuff. So depending on the show that we're doing, we have different profiles set for each show. I'm gonna show you kind of the buttons here. Now, obviously it might be a little out of focus, but we're gonna go here, title, boom. Show starting soon. Then we go to a countdown that we have. We have an intro. We have live, back to live. If we have lower thirds, boom, lower thirds. Then we can go to any other pre-recorded content. We can go to different segments, go back to live. We're able to record and start the stream from here as well. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be set up on the back end. So this video is not gonna go over all the programming I have to do, but the fundamentals of the setup here are really just switch sources, switch overlays, monitor audio. And on occasion, we do have another show where we have a laptop feed coming in. And what we do there is we run another capture card, the Elgato Cam Link, connect that to one of the USB ports, run the laptop video HDMI out into that, and then we're able to add that as another layer. So there's a lot we can do here. If you look here on the top right corner of the desk setup, these are the receivers for the various Teradex. So each floating cam, those Panasonic cameras I mentioned earlier, have a transmitter on them. And then these are the three. So we have three floating cams potentially that we could have live at any point. Now with those wireless transmitter systems, they are HDMI, so you could use them on any cam. They could be on the stationary cams if we wanted them to, but again, we have those primarily for the camcorders for all the live action skateboarding. So there you guys have it. That's the production studio I built for the barracks for their caffeine shows, which I'm directing. Shout out to Amari, who's always a huge help in pretty much everything that I do. Couldn't have done this without him. It was a lot of stuff that we did. And it's a, it's a lot of gear, a lot of stuff on the back end programming too that took a lot of time, but everything works fantastically well. I'm super happy with it. The production looks great. If you guys haven't already checked them out, go check out those shows on the Caffeine app on the Barracks channel. We have different shows on different days. If you guys are interested in any of the gear that we have here, we do have links in the description where you can purchase it. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. And if anybody out there needs a studio built or some type of production studio, whether it's music, live streaming, gaming, etc., hit your boy up. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.